to see you all. <clears throat> all right, Happy New Year. Let's get started. Um, <clears throat> so today's going to focus on some philosophies that I think are really powerful in terms of restarting our practice, coming back to some fundamental basics about what meditation is. Uh, and it's always enchanting and fortifying to recall these details. And so with that, I wanted to start off with um, a little bit, uh, a metaphor, a philosophical metaphor that comes out of the Vedas. Many gods in Hinduism, many gods in the proto-Hindu religious culture, and one of them was named Indra. And Indra was uh, the god of gods in the ancient world, and he had a net that he cast over Mount Meru. And so Mount Meru is this hypothetical a legendary mountain that signified the center of Mundi, or the center of the world. And so Indra, some grand architect, cast this net over Mount Meru, over the center of the world, and in this, the net cascaded over the entirety of the physical plane. And at the junction point of, of at every junction point of this net, there was a jewel. And so it's a very sort of ornate net um, that feeds into the, the glamour and the artistry of the divine, which signifies in itself that those that create reality are, are invested in beauty, invested in wonder, and invested in the aesthetic of wonder. So there's this net, this net of Indra. And so the detail of this net is that if you look into every jewel, the way it was designed is that you would find within it the glimmering of every other jewel. And so every jewel, every piece contained the whole. And this signifies the philosophical idea that within every atom, within every cell, within every organism, there within it lies the, the secret of life itself, the secret of divinity. And so another term, a more, a more modern term that signifies that the piece is also the whole, that you are the whole, is a holon. The fragment is an aspect, or the fragment is a complete expression of that which created it. And in Sanskrit, the term that signifies this idea that the fragment is the whole is pratitya samutpada. It's dependent origination, that I depend on the whole of the universe to continue to exist, and the universe in some strange way depends on my existence to push forward through time. It's an enchanting idea. And the reason I'm sharing this uh, sort of... Uh, illustrative metaphor is because it's a nice way of interacting with specific philosophical terms, that every term that we discuss on these Wednesday mornings is one jewel in this metaphorical net of Indra, and that if you really take the time to look into it and to feel it and to contemplate it deeply, you will find that that single concept somehow leads you to the, to the epicenter of what life is and more than likely what you seek through your practice. And so... <clears throat> Every concept is worth spending time with. And that's it. And so we're going to pluck one jewel from this metaphorical net of Indra today, or a few actually, a few jewels from this metaphorical net of Indra today, and behold them deeply. And so the philosophies I wanted to talk about today are Anu and Vib. Anu signifies the atomic direction, meaning that our attention and our consciousness can look into us, into our own being as much as it can look outside of us and into the world, which is what we're doing right now. And so when we look into ourselves in the atomic direction, Anu, uh, we move in the process or we, we migrate towards the, the experience of meditation. And when we're out and about in the rest of our days, this concept is called Vib, V-I-B-H-U, and that is the cosmic direction. And this is where we are, you know, where our biology uh, propels us or compels us to look. All organisms look outside. It's the, the rare human being because of its sentience that takes the time to look inwardly. And so we have Anu and we have Vib. And this is sort of the backbone of our lesson today. When we're meditating, all I want you to do, um, cast aside the idea of peace, cast out the idea of focus. I just want you to feel that through your stillness and through your steady breathing, you are in fact migrating in a direction, a direction that is increasingly intangible and increasingly subtle. And that this little direction, Anu, is one philosophical idea nested in this uh, you know, cosmic net of Indra. And if you just follow Anu, you follow the internal, it will lead you to what you are looking for. 
last little bit, uh, the sort of sophistication of the meditative process, which separates it from, I would say, Western therapy or psychology, yoga and meditation is very, very, very concerned, not necessarily just with the jewel of the, the particular session, let's say Anu today, but is more concerned with what beholds the jewel, what beholds the philosophy, what beholds the consequence of contemplating the philosophy. That beholder is in fact what all meditative practices are gearing the, the student for. And it arises with a very simple question, what beholds X, Y, or Z? And so we're going to thread into our technique today, because we'll have a technique, um, a little process that enables you to both appreciate Anu, right, the, the jewel of internalization, and then Atma, right, the soul that beholds this direction, and your practice, and your experience. Cool. So hope all that makes sense. What are we going to do today? We're going to open up, as we always do, with this ritual of peace. Before we even get into the work and into the technicality of this style, uh, you're just going to sit down and wait for peace to arise by controlling your breath. If it does, it does. Wonderful. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Also wonderful. The presence or absence of peace are both informative in terms of where you are right now today. And so after that, you're going to sit down and meditate and still conduct yourself in that sort of meditative, peaceful way. Deep, steady breaths in, deep, steady breaths out. Work to hold your stillness. Work to withstand your thought process and focus on one particular point in your body. Maybe it's your chest. Maybe it's your face. Maybe it's the tip of your nose. And then from time to time, I will cue it. But I would also encourage you to sort of remind yourself of ANU, the term, A-N-U. And try to feel that you are, in fact, internalizing and looking into yourself. And in some way, your little consciousness has migrated away from the external, away from the outside, crossed some ph philosophical line, and has now entered uh, the inner space. And so if you can feel that, okay, I'm really inside myself. I can sense that I'm within my body, maybe within my thoughts, maybe deeper. I just want you to bring your hands to heart center to acknowledge that. And so you're building an association through action and experience and recognition to this philosophy. In time, you won't need to bring your hands to heart center to acknowledge Anu, but right now we're trying to fortify that relationship. So boom, I felt that um, I'm experiencing Anu, I'm internalized. And then at that point, I'd like you to bring your thumb knuckles to third eye center to ask yourself the most significant question. Who is beholding Anu? Who is registering? What is registering that I have stepped away from the external and into the internal? And there might not be an intellectual answer. The answer would be Atman if there is, but you can just feel, yes, in fact, there is some distant consciousness perceiving the entire experience. And if you can pay attention to that distant sort of unaffected consciousness, that is a huge element of meditation. So you sit there, yes. I am beholding this experience, I am beholding Anu, this is Atman, this is soul. And then I'd like you to bring your hands back to heart center to again acknowledge Anu. And so your attention is shifting from the philosophical intent, Anu, to the beholder of that experience, Atman, back to the philosophical intent, Anu. And this little discrimination um, is called Vivek Khyati crystal clear discrimination. You can dissect and recognize the, the subtle layers between, um, you know, pretty, uh, you can dissect the subtle layers of the meditative experience, which are, you know, fairly hard to separate. And that's a powerful skill as well. And I think this little physical uh, exercise will really enable that skill. Awesome. Cool. So let's do this. Uh, happy to see you all. Happy Wednesday, bright and early. Strong seated position, wrists on knees, really straight arms, tilt your hips forward, very powerful posture. Hands held open, palms face up to the sky. And what I'd like you to feel right now is that through your posture, you provoke within yourself a sense of power, a sense of confidence. So by organizing your body, your flesh tells your mind, I've got this. Shut the jaw, press the tongue into the back of your two front teeth. Bring your fingers to your thumbs, hold your mudras delicately. 
And so that point of contact between thumb and finger, this little specific point, imagine that within that point, there is a jewel of Indra. An atom of wisdom that if you look at deeply, will inform you of the whole of existence. Pratitya Samutpada, dependent origination. Every cell depends on every other cell, every atom depends on every other atom, every ecosystem depends on its neighboring ecosystem. And so breathe deeply and slowly, focus on the subtle sensations of your body, tingling, buzzing, your weight, your mass, your sense of relaxation, even your sense of stress or tension. Look deeply into those sensations. And in the next two minutes, if a sense of peace arises, a sense of ordinary peace or remarkable peace arises, bring your hands to heart center and acknowledge it, memorize it, and then bring your hands back to your, or your wrists back to your knees. So moving forward from the opening ritual, if peace came, it came. If it didn't, it didn't. If it didn't, consider the mind, despite your intention, was too externalized, rooted in expectations, rooted in judgment, rooted in distraction or agendas. It was lost in thought and in that disconnected from the reality. A reality that is always miraculous, always expressing its magic and mystery through sensation that can be reduced, no matter what it is at the surface, to a buzzing vibrational evidence that you exist.
And so the philosophical terms are vib. Pay attention to the world around you. Listen. And then think about the rest of your day or your future or all the things you have to do to interact with that environment. Conversations you have to have with certain people. Errands you have to run. Goals you have. And now fixate on the subtle sensations of the body. Anu. Sense the substrata of the mind, not the specific thoughts, but the deeper self. The self that you always are. From a child to an adolescent to an adult. Sense yourself as an animal born out of nature. And one more time, externalize the mind. Feel the clothes on your skin, external. Again, the world around you, the sounds of your morning. Think of your day, think of your conversations, think of your responsibilities, think of your goals. Identify all of that and the feeling of that direction as vib. And last time, subtle sensations in the body, your mass, your weight, tingling, buzzing, vibration. Think of the innermost individual, that part of you that is older than your name. And so the question is, how do we move in this direction? Our legs can't carry us. Our eyes can't see the way. And so how you move in this direction is through non-reactivity, stillness, perfect stillness. You move in this direction by relaxing the nervous system that comes through deep, steady breathing. All of this is super familiar. And as the body becomes physically relaxed, your mind is more willing to internalize, more willing to pay attention to its inner sensations. And so you just feel. Feel without thinking. And breath by breath, just like stepping up a mountain, eventually you'll find yourself in a new world. If over the course of these next 15 minutes, you feel Anu, you feel that you are inside yourself, again, hands to heart center, acknowledge it, and then bring your thumb knuckles to third eye center to acknowledge that which beholds this direction or that which beholds this new position. And then last time, hands to heart center to acknowledge Anu again. And then wrist back to knees to continue the process again. Alrighty, everyone. Enjoy yourselves. Good work. Good luck.
take three more hyper slow breaths and try to provoke a sense of Amun by thinking of it, critically considering it. I'm within myself. I can instinctively feel I am in my body, inside my mind, if not beyond my mind. Will yourself to perceive Anu. Three breaths. Hands to heart center, stay within yourself. And so you could imagine if rain were to fall somehow in my home, on my body, it would not matter. If bugs were to crawl on my skin, if ants were to bite me, it would not matter, I'm inside. If my phone were to ring, it would not matter. Thumb knuckles to third eye center. What beholds this experience? What perceives your thoughts? What is cognizant of your body and of your moment and of your context? That is the mythical center point of your existence. That is Atman, and building a relationship to that you know, fleeting sense of a center, fleeting sense of an inner individual is the big goal of this practice. Like inserting a key into a lock. Once we develop a bond with that, the way we conduct ourselves and the way we perceive the world changes dramatically. And so step by step, Release your wrists back to your knees. <clears throat> Sit as that inner center point, as that inner consciousness. And with the breath in, mindfully open your eyes and repeat in the mind, I am no longer meditating. And that difference in mental state is theoretically because you've been externalized, pulled back into Vib pulled back into identity, pulled back into thoughts. And so just observe that difference. I'm no longer meditating. 